At ISIUM 2011, presentations discussing topics ranging from modeling cancer to helping us gain a deeper understanding of biological processes and disease dynamics showcase that applied mathematics is an integral part of medical science. Diabetes is a disease like most disease that costs numerous amounts of dollars yearly. What a lot of you might not know is diabetes is the number one cause of blindness and kidney failure in the United States and it's also the one of the leading causes of amputations and non-traumatic injuries. The topic of my presentation was applying glucose monitoring data to statistical computational algorithms that we're developing to try to help manage patients who are diabetic and to help provide information back to clinicians that might be useful for predicting long-term and acute complications in patients. Well, our hypothesis is that this slope reflects severity or the dynamical stress that is dealing with the patients who are diabetic. The new monitors today are allowing them to measure this you know, on a very continuous time scale and eventually what we would like to be able to do is take that technology and make it useful for the patient that they can actually read that themselves and with these algorithms determine if wow, I'm, I'm going into this very stressful region or I'm about ready to have a stressful event that they can you know, predict that from happening and then prevent that from happening. One of the beautiful things about mathematics, it allows you to formalize your general understanding of the process. Cancer is a very complex system, but you can kind of break it down into sub-problems and there you can actually use this very, very well-developed mathematical apparatus to answer targeted biological questions. Therefore, if you know the initial distribution of your clones in the population, then, and if it has a moment generating function, then using my uh, auxiliary equations that I introduced before, I can calculate the total population size and how it changes over time. In general, what I work on is actually modeling cancer as an evolving ecological system. You have a heterogeneous population of cells that compete with each other, with other cells, uh, for space, for nutrients, for all of those things. And we have a very, very well-developed literature on, ecolo on ecology and ecological modeling. So what I'm trying to do is reapply that to um, cancer, but uh, well, usually we try to save species. In this case, we actually want to see, well, what do we know about conservation biology, maybe to try to eradicate this particular subspecies. But we actually have a second brain. And this brain, unfortunately, does not do mathematics. This brain is a large network of neurons which are connected in the gastrointestinal tract, and they are responsible for all gut function. It's a large, complex network of neurons which are all connected together, just like the central nervous system is, and that's why it's called a second brain. There's a quite common birth defect. It's called Hirschsprung's disease. And one in 5,000 babies has Hirschsprung's disease. And in this disease, there are no neurons in the last part of the gut. That means there's no peristalsis. This is certainly an example of an invasion process and it's got, in tissue engineering you certainly have proliferation is extremely important and a little bit with migration and we are working with bioengineers to use some of this in that application. In an experiment you can't manipulate things so well whereas in a, in a model you can play around with parameters and rules that you use and that allows you to, to experiment and therefore you can explain experimental data. The primary goal of this particular project is to see how to use more effectively oxygen treatment. Without oxygen, wounds will not heal, but too much oxygen it will also be uh, bad for the patient because it's toxic. And the question is how to balance it uh, in a way which will uh, help uh, the process of healing as best as possible. The process of healing is very complex and uh, to try to experiment at each aspect of it will take a lot of time, lots of money. By the time to develop a model, we are trying to capture the essence of it and try to validate the model with whatever uh, data it is known. And then we can propose to the experimentalist to do, uh, go in a certain direction rather than another direction, and that uh, saves them lots of time. So in that sense, the model is really becoming a tool for biomedical people.